Hello. Hello. Um, so first of all, Solitaire, what's, what's plant placement all about? What's, what's the idea behind this? Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for letting me be here. Um, it's lovely to see your faces being held back behind the cameras. It feels quite appropriate. Um, uh, my name is Solitaire, which is literally the best name. Um, and I am co-founder of an organization called Futera. And Futera was launched here at BAFTA 18 years ago this month. And we were launched in order to put together the logic of what you can do about sustainability with the magic of storytelling and emotion um, uh, and creativity. And sitting here listening to this, um, if I was you, I would be standing out there going, OK, so as an industry, we are mentioning cake more often than we're mentioning the existential crisis to all of humanity. Watch the fuck. <laughs> so watch the fuck do we do about the fact that we are more interested in cake than the survival of our species? Um, uh, and that's what we're here to answer. So uh, we know what the fuck you can do. Um, uh, uh, I really hope this isn't live broadcast. <laughs> So, um, uh, Futera, in partnership with, um, with Albert and a really small team of folks, have sat down and we've been asking you, we've been asking production designers, we've been asking commissioning editors, we've been asking directors. We worked with the Edinburgh ones to watch, the young talent coming up, and we've put together a guide. It's the beginning of a guide, but it's a guide and it's planetplacement.co.uk. Um, let's see if we can crash BAFTA's Wi-Fi and open planetplacement.co.uk and what you'll do is you'll find um, a really rich and detailed guide that's been pulled together with all of that fantastic input in terms of how do we take this big, complex, kind of scientific challenge which despite being the biggest crisis humanity's ever faced, can sometimes be a bit fucking boring. How do we take that and actually make passionate, controversial, human stories that engage new audiences? Because in many ways, this is about new audiences. This is about the millennials who, in the recent World Economic Forum survey, put climate change as the biggest concern for them. Above, above terrorism, above the economy, it's climate change that they're more concerned about. The million Generation Z, the million kids who around the world striked just two weeks ago, my favorite banner being truancy should be more fun than this. Um, <laughs> These, 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 these are your audiences. These are their f your future audiences. These are the kids who are out there making their own content today and sharing it on YouTube with each other about these issues. It's about the 60% increase in searches on Google for sustainable fashion, the 265% increase in searches on Pinterest on how do I live a sustainable life. This incredible demand that you've got out there, particularly from young audiences, to hear these stories. And the Planet Placement Guide is, is a, a kick up the arse, a resource, a, a, a body of work that will help you do that. So as you go through, you'll see that we're not just telling the obvious stories on Planet Placement. There's a whole set of facts, of stats, of individuals, of heroes, of human interest, and, and, of, and, of, and of science on things such as climate catastrophe, but also, as Christiana said, about the climate optimism. We've got insights and asks around what individuals can do, not just about kind of, you know, um, uh, one of the commissioning editors told us that they were sick of people coming to them with environmental programs, which is about how do you torture a family for a month to be green, like live a month without waste. You know, can, can a family create no environmental footprint for months? It's really boring. So actually there's a lot more exciting around uh, stories around how we eat, how we travel, how we play, how we waste, how we get our resources. There's also guides for all of you. 
There's guides for the different roles, the different jobs that those of us in the room have, from production designers to writers, scripted, non-scripted, commissioning editors. So you can see from your peers what it is that you could be doing. The detail of that. And there's also a bank of resources. In fact, if you're on planetplacement.co.uk right now, you'll see that the two resources on the front page are from Blue Planet and Black Mirror. And I think that is a really good sign of the diversity that can be drawn out of these issues. And I would love to see every single person in here sending Futeran, sending Albert within the next year more resources for us to shine a spotlight on, for us to show more content. Um, and that it is incredibly important to remember this is not about educating the public. Who the fuck wants to be educated? This is about heroes, villains. This is about massive changes that are happening in our world and tiny stories in our local communities. This is about new technology. This is about breaking old technology. This is about kids on the street and mums and dads in their homes. This touches every part of the content that we make and there are real passionate stories of individuals to be told out there. This is the greatest creative challenge of a generation. It's the greatest creative challenge of a generation. And if we don't meet that challenge, then actually the kids are going to do it themselves through YouTube and others. So please go on to Planet Placement. Please be inspired by what you see there. And please show us what is possible, where you can take this. Like, what is the genre that we haven't taken this into yet? Show us what is possible. So sorry, that was a really long answer because I had slides to a really simple question. And actually, I'm gonna throw this right back at you, Steve, because you've had the chance to take a look at this. So as an award-winning director, leader of Directors UK, what did you see in here? What was your response to the sneaky peek you got of the guide? Well, it's just an amazing resource. I mean, it's one of those things that if I ran an indie or if I had a development team, it would be something that they should be going immediately to because you know, what, what's going to happen over the next 12 years? If we're going to meet the targets and fold those pieces of paper like Christiana was showing, every single thing we do in society is going to have to be done differently. We're going to have to decarbonize everything. The UK have made quite good progress at kind of reducing carbon emissions, but a lot of that's been done by closing coal mines. And so we don't really notice that when we turn our electricity on and off at the moment. But for the next 12 years, we're going to have to pick on the things and change them that ordinary people get involved with every day of their life, how they, f how they cook, what kind of food they have, how they travel, how they heat their homes, everything. It's all the kind of areas that we as program makers are constantly kind of working in, isn't it? And Unless we know about this stuff, unless we kind of are able to work on it, we're not going to sort of future-proof our industry. I think future-proofing the industry is a really great frame for some of this. So you've had the chance to look at the guide. What, what, what part of it would you encourage people to go to first? For me, I think the, the section that clearly sh sort of shows the kind of the problems and some of the solutions, I think. So this section here where you go through a number of different areas from how we eat, how we travel. And I just think it's brilliant that it kind of clearly illustrates the problems that we face as a society. But it's also kind of showing you the solutions and it's pointing you to areas that you could explore as program makers and delve down into. And uh, for me, you know, that's, that's the most fascinating thing because I think it will inspire great content. So why isn't it happening already? What are some of the barriers that people are facing in the industry if they actually want to incorporate, deal with, reflect this, all of the, the, the environmental issues, you know, not just climate change, but biodiversity, waste, energy? What, why, why isn't this? Why are we talking about cake more than climate change? I think we've got ourselves into a sort of trap where we, we've seen climate change as being very sciencey, very kind of detailed, and it's not really. It's about human stories, and we're storytellers. That's what we do. So, you know, if you if you look at what's going on in in sort of Africa with the sort of the catastrophe that's happened as a result of that cyclone, millions of people displaced. You know, the, these are people that have all got stories to tell. Just looking at home, you know, we, we think sometimes that it's, it's not going to affect us as much as other parts of the world. It could do. We've, we're an island. You know, we've got coastal kind of cities. 
they're at risk of flooding. You know, Bristol is at risk. It, you know, it could, it could disappear. That, that affects Not people. Bristol. Not Bristol. It could disappear. And, and also, you know, challenging people. You know, as, as Christiana was saying, the city of London is kind of, you know, pumping money into fossil fuels. You know, we need to be investigating this. We need to be challenging this as program makers. We need to be shining lights on these areas and, and finding out what's going on and how we can change it. So um, in the genres that you work in, so, you know, there's a lot of factual out there that's going on. There's a lot of scripted that's happening on climate change. What about some of the genres that perhaps climate change forgot? What about some of live TV? What about some reality? You know, how, how can we push this into other avenues? Well, I think there's some really fascinating case studies on, on there as well. I mean, what, one of the, the things I think is really interesting is, is what Love Island has done to sort of promote sustainability perhaps not quite realizing the impact they were going to have, but when they had water bottles, that sort of reusable water bottles on the show, that then inspired viewers to go out and buy them. So ITV have done very well. They've sold water bottles, but that's kind of changing perceptions. It's changing people's habits. And so that kind of just shows how sometimes normalizing behavior. So as a director, I think it's really important to think of those opportunities where you can normalize behavior. So. You know, when you're, when you're shooting dramas, for example, are there things that you could get your cast to be doing that kind of shows what, could, what a sustainable future could look like? We've done it before as well. I mean, if you think of the role the media have had in things like drink driving, um, seat belts, you know, we, we've helped normalize behavior that's good for us. So um, one of the most exciting sessions we had was with the Edinburgh Ones to Watch, who we showed some of this content to, and they were like, can we have it? Can we have it? Can we use it today? What about the future, the young talent that's coming up in the industry? Is this something that they should be looking at, or is this something which they're already doing? I think, I think it's something that young people will get sort of a, lot of a lot of useful information out of it, but there is a generational thing going on here as well. You know, that, that young generation, as you've said, the 16 to 30 year olds that as broadcasters we're always trying to engage, they are already engaging in this. And you know, as you were saying, they're making content already on YouTube. So perhaps this isn't just good for the planet, it's good for us as a business because it will help us engage with new audiences and help us kind of bring them along and, and, and not desert sort of traditional me media. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, and thank you, everybody, for attending this evening. Um, I know everyone's standing up and there's more booze, so we won't, we, we won't continue this much longer. But um, I'd really encourage you, download the guide and then show us... Oh, I'll continue my theme. Show us what's fucking possible. So thank you so very much. Thank you.